we'd like to introduce you to our new tools designed to support Daikin customers. The Heating Solutions Navigator is a toolkit on Stand By Me, which brings together all the tools required to complete the design and selection of a system. It's so simple to use, you can create a solution for your customer in just five minutes. The Heating Solutions Navigator allows you to create quick solutions for initial inquiries or detailed reports for qualified hot prospects. All this can be shared with your customer at the click of a button, so you can follow up leads quickly, your customers can make informed decisions, and you can maximize your project opportunities. Heating Solutions Navigator allows you to select your proposed solution, create a detailed solution specification, complete detailed load calculations, optimize your radiator schedule, check sound calculations, see equipment lists, and generate energy labels. So you can use this advanced toolkit to work more efficiently and win more business. To access the Heating Solutions Navigator, first log in to Stand By Me and click on the Leads button on the left of the top navigation bar. The Leads page will show you all your open leads, which you can view at any time. From here, simply add a lead using the button on the right. This will take you to a new Select a Solution page. This allows you to select a solution in three possible ways. One, on the left, you can filter the specification options to refine your product options. Two, in the middle search bar, you can search for a solution if you know the product you're looking for. Three, on the right, you can select a product category from the drop-down menu. Once you have selected your preferred product offer, click on the product and you'll go to a more detailed solutions page. The first step is to define the zones of your heating system. Then define the control methodology you're always going to use. We always recommend the room thermostat control. Then go to the location bar and enter the postcode of your project. This will start to define your system configuration and control as well as inputting the local weather data. Next, you need to do some detailed load, radiator, and sound calculations. You can do a load calculation in three possible ways. One, simply fill out the capacity number if you know it. Two, take the fast and easy option to complete a simplified heat load calculation. Three, you can complete an advanced room by room heat load calculation, which we recommend for MCS compliance. Let's take a look at the simplified calculation method. First, open the calculator and select whether you know the current energy usage of the building or not. If you do know the energy usage and the energy source used, you can simply input the kilowatt hours used in that house. Then you can estimate the peak heat loss for the building and submit the result to complete the load calculations. If you don't know the energy usage, you can still add in the location and building information you do know such as region, altitude, year of construction, heated surface, building type, and whether it is detached, semi-detached, or terraced. Once you've added in as much detail as possible, then you can estimate the peak heat loss for the building and submit the result to complete the load calculation. But remember, you can also complete an advanced room-by-room -room heat load calculation which we recommend for MCS compliance. In this session, we'll use an example of a simple single zone house to show you the steps required to complete an advanced room by room heat load calculation. First, open the calculator. If you haven't already inputted your project location, you can do so here. Next, move straight on to define the design conditions according to MCS guidance. Define whether the property is an exposed location or not. Select the age range of construction. The outside design temperatures are already defined based on the location you provided. You can then adjust the altitude if required, which will correct the outside design temperature. Next, you can define the reheat patterns for the zones you have selected. You can define the system as always on or intermittent. If you select intermittent, you then need to set the setback temperature and the time taken to reach your indoor design conditions. Click Next and you're ready to start adding your rooms. First, we'll add a new room to the selected zone. Name the room and select its type. Once it has been added to the zone, 
click on the room to start defining its properties. In this example, the age of room is preset to the age range you have already given in the house. The room temperature and air exchange rates are set according to the room type you have chosen based on SIBSI guidance. So a living room would have a different temperature and air exchange rate to a bathroom or kitchen. Next, you're going to set up the room. For a square room, you can use the easy mode. For other shaped rooms, you can use the advanced mode. Let's take a look at the easy mode for now. So click on the easy mode and enter the room dimensions. Here I'm going to create a room from our plan that's 1.8 meters wide by 2.5 meters in length and 2.6 meters high. In order to fully define a room, you need to define all surfaces, the floor, ceiling and walls. For the floor, you can define the floor type, ground, internal or party, where the heat transfers to, directly to the exterior, through the ground or suspended floor, whether the thermal bridges are insulated and the construction type of the surface. The U values will then be automatically calculated. Or if you have given the construction type as other, you can also input the U values manually. You follow the same steps for ceiling and define. The ceiling type, roof, internal or party, where the heat transfers to, whether the thermal bridges are insulated, and the construction type of the surface. You do the same again for the walls and define the wall type, external, internal, or party, where the heat transfers to, whether the thermal bridges are insulated, and the construction type of the surface. If you have chosen an internal wall, you'll also have the option to add further rooms such as hallways into the zone by clicking add room and completing the details. Whenever you see a toggle switch, you'll also have the option to add windows and doors if required. For each wall, you'll need to input all the relevant details until you build up a complete picture of every room. Once you've defined all of the building elements, you can see the total heat load requirement for the room in the top right hand corner. Then in the top left hand corner, you can return to your zone summary and complete the same process for each room. The process speeds up as the calculator remembers any relevant construction details and applies it to subsequent rooms. Now remember that we've used the easy mode so far for square rooms. As mentioned already, for other shaped rooms, you can use the advanced mode. The process is basically the same, except that we need to define the floor and ceiling area in meters squared. You can have more than four walls with, for an example, an L-shaped wall defined as three separate wall sections, and you can simply build up the room element by element. Once you've defined all your rooms, you will then know the total heat load for the entire house. You can also do this in the heat load overview section by clicking on the right hand tab. Next, return to the heating solutions navigator and don't forget to save your calculations. The next step is to complete your radiator calculations. Each room from your advanced load calculation has been automatically brought into the radiator selector tool. Click on each room and add a radiator. Either add a new one or define an existing one. Simply give each radiator a reference name and define its age, then add it to the schedule. On the next page, simply define the size and type of radiator in each room and the green bar at the bottom of the page will tell you if this gives you enough capacity required to heat the room. If you see an exclamation mark, this means your radiator is undersized and you can either replace it with a bigger radiator, add another radiator or increase the leaving water temperature. Please remember that the higher the leaving water temperature, the less efficient the system is. So it's always better to add or increase the size of a radiator before increasing the leaving water temperature. If you choose to increase the leaving water temperature, the radiator selector tool will provide a recommendation of what the temperature should be, and you can simply accept this change. Repeat the same steps for each of the rooms until each room has a suitably sized radiator and defined by the green ticks. Then go to your equipment list in the top right of the navigator bar to view the design properties and equipment list. Then save your results and return to the report section. The next step is to complete your sound calculations. Simply click on the sound calculations box. Choose the directivity. 
If you're not sure how to, click on the how to choose guidance. Select your distance. Again, there's guidance if you need it. And finally, select a barrier if required using the guidance available. Then click Calculate to see the outdoor sound pressure level for your solution and whether this meets the MCS criteria. Once you've completed all these steps, scroll down to the solution recommended by Daikin and select this option, or choose one of the alternatives based on your own experience to move through to the report section. Now you have completed all of your system calculations, you will get a detailed report to share with the customer. Your solution report offers product images and simplified schematics, solution highlights, energy labels, and sound pressure levels. Then as you scroll down, you can access more detailed product descriptions, specifications, and equipment lists, which can be downloaded as a CSV file. On the right, you can access the relevant literature for your product selection and choose optional accessories and quantities, including flu options if necessary. You'll also find schematics, including piping and wiring diagrams. You can perform RHI calculations and generate income estimates. There's also an e-configurator, which allows you to review your system setup and define your space heating and domestic hot water parameters in advance. These include your leaving water temperature mode, settings, and your reheat times. All this saves commissioning time on site by providing you with a parameter checklist top right hand section of the report is your working area where you can navigate back to your leads, share the report with your customer or team, recalculate or start again. Just make sure you enter all your customer details and save the lead before you close the window. So this brings us to the end of our video tutorial series. I hope you found it useful and you are now ready to get going with our Heating Solutions Navigator.